In this video, I'm conducting an interview with Marco Fonazir, General Secretary General of the Worldwide Backgammon Federation. He's been around backgammon for a very long time and has, has a lot of knowledge and a lot of stories that we'll be looking forward to hearing in this video. If you love backgammon, then you should stick around to hear what he says. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoy this video. Please like and subscribe and you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Let me know what you think in the comments below and what you'd like to see in future videos, and I'll work on that. Again, if you love Backgammon, you can become a member of this channel, and that way you'll get exclusive access to the most popular videos. My book, Backgammon, Backgame Strategies, is available. There's a link in the description to where you can get it. And if you're interested in lessons, please email me. My email address is also in the description. Again, in this video, it's my great pleasure to welcome Secretary General of the Worldwide Backgammon Federation, Marco Fornazir. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. My pleasure. How are you doing today or tonight for you? No, no, quite good. Quite good. Very good. Very good. Happy to have you. Thank you. We for are coming. we are we are quite ready for the our uh, merit uh, open. We oh, have great. a tournament in the early November in Cyprus. I am director together with Arda Findicolu. And uh, and so we are under stress for the preparation now. <laughs> I know. It's always very stressful. I'm looking forward to uh, learning more about that. Um, I, I know you're, you're joining us from um, northern Italy. Is that correct? Yes, exactly. Okay. Uh, I wanted to start with a little background biographical information, if I may. Can you please tell us uh, where you were born and raised? Yes. So I am born in Gorizia. Gorizia is a little town, something like 30,000 citizens around. And uh, Gorizia was famous because like Berlin was divided in two parts between Italy and Yugoslavia after the Second World War. So I uh, I lived there until I'm born in 56. So I am 68 years old at the moment. But in 83, I decided to leave Gorizia to come in Milan because my dream was to be journalist. So I realized that if I remain in Gorizia or in the surrounding Trieste, Udine, it's very difficult to be journalist. In Milan was the most uh, important uh, uh, newspaper, magazines, and so on. So I decided to come here. Very good. So you have a background in journalism. How did you get into backgammon? Uh, yes, I have background in journalist. I was a director of uh, four magazines for cars, uh, motorbike, uh, um, trucks and uh, cranes and special vehicle and uh, for 12 years and now I am press office for some uh, institution and uh, I lived in Milan since uh, 83 till 2005 since 2005, I live in Sesto Calain. There is a little town on the Lake Maggiore, 50 kilometers north from Milan. But I go every week, every Tuesday night in Milan because I have my Begemon night for the Begemon Club Milano WBF. So we have to, to run this tournament. So for me, it's also a, um, a chance to go to Milan for something. Very good. So wh when did you start playing backgammon? Uh, really, I started when I was 18 years old. But for the first 10 years, something like 10 years, I play, but without the knowledge about the meaning of the move. So I play... I, I didn't read book before. I play uh, instinctively with instinct. And also I don't I never found people that really play good and mm, gave me good 
suggestions. Uh, after I came in Milan, I I tried to 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 find uh, people that play backgammon, and uh, finally I met uh, Mr. Dapra. That he told me, okay, Marco, it's better you start to read a book. And at the moment, at the time, the only book available in Italian was Goren. It's a very old book. I don't know if you know the Goren. Goren's modern backgammon. Modern back something, yes. Yes, I know yes, it. My, it's really, really old. And uh, and after that, I mm. understand something better. The book don't give me some surprise. Uh, quite everything I read, I read on the book was on my hand, but I have not the the possibility to put the the facts in a logic uh, uh, trend. After the book, much better. <laughs> After I start to play with the other one, then I I I develop my game. And but uh, honestly, I am more attracted of the organization than of the play. I like to play. I won an international tournament because I won in Antalya. In the 2010, the Mediterranean Championship, and I beat quite all the people uh, in that year. Was very good. For example, Abdullah Sorguven, for example, John Broomfield, for example, um, uh, oh, the Lebanese guy that lives in Spain, Ricky. Uh, uh, Ricardo Malas. Ah, uh, Ricardo. Malas. In final, I beat uh, <clears throat> Kazu Hiroshino, the Japanese that live in London. So really, I deserve this title. Yes, yes. You've done a, you've done a lot of work in yes. terms of the organization. Yes, uh, yes. But I know you. I like I like to organize more than play. I attract to the organization. Okay, well, good. Uh, what, what is it? I mean, most of the most of the people I know like to play more than organize. But I know, like, I've organized events, and it I'm can be... a, yes, I'm opposite. Yeah, I, yeah. I it's born all... as organizer, and then I became a little bit a player. But yeah, not many people is a player and like to be uh, organizer. Yeah, I organize things and it can be stressful. It can be a headache. It can be dealing. Uh, it can be difficult dealing with, with people. Uh, what do you like about organizing the tournaments? Yeah, the satisfaction to, to combine all the elements of the organization to give uh, the best uh, performance to our players. For example, um, Cyprus is one of the most uh, important tournament in the world. For example, I ran for quite 20 years uh, uh, the Middle Europa tournament in Nova Gorica in Slovenia. Is the uh, Slovenian part of Gorizia, my born town. Yes. My hometown. And, uh, and uh, I remember in the 2002-2003, we reach uh, 243 players. In this year, we was uh, we were the the third important tournament in the world after uh, after uh, Monte Carlo and after Las Vegas. Maybe oh, wow. Nordic Open is something more. I don't know, but if well, there are no three, we are four. So <laughs> we are on the on the best five for sure. Because 243 in the 2004 was difficult to collect. Right, right. So uh, what do you, what would you say are the keys to organizing a tournament? There's a lot that goes on. What are the most important things for you? Ma, there are many things. Uh, there are promotion, to do a good promotion, to have good uh, ambassador of the tournament, people that go around the tournament and 
and promote your uh, event. So you have uh, some deal with some important player. For example, since the beginning, we have uh, um, a good relation with uh, Mochi and Michi. Uh, and uh, uh, we are uh, the first tournament, international tournament, to host uh, Mochi's lesson, for example. And... Um, and my 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 goal is to 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 give to the players um a good uh, social uh, ambience i like uh, the people meet the people became friends and uh, the atmosphere had to be friendly it's difficult when you have some very good money as prize because the people fight with a knife on the mouth <laughs> but uh, still we like to to give a, a a good ambience really a good ambience friendly ambience and uh, all the players uh, know that that is uh, like that so when they come they find uh, uh, a smile from our staff, from me, and uh, from all the people that work with us. We like to be very, very friendly with the players because the players, many players, they are for the first time in this tournament and they don't know what, uh, so you have to to, to give them uh, some confidence confidence to to they are in a good place in the right place it is it's only human human skills not uh, nothing um, you can build artificial because or you are um, uh, or you are able to 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 have good relationship since the first moment with the people or forget it because uh, there are people that make efforts but uh, sorry <laughs> they can do they cannot do that <laughs> yes i've heard um similar remarks from uh, arda Findikoglu. when i interviewed him he says you know it's important that um you have a good rapport uh with the patrons and the the players uh you've been you've been organizing tournaments for a very long time what would you say the players like most about your tournaments that keeps them coming back? I think the atmosphere. Then you have to combine prize, participation, uh, good quality of the board, the, the clean of the board, because there are tournaments in which you play, the board are dirty. Mm. It's horrible. I I um, I'm specialist to clean a uh, sanitize each board before each tournament. And when we are in a big tournament like uh, Cyprus, for example, we have something like three hundred boards to clean. So the hotel give us a, a group of ten people that for two days clean under my direction the, the, the boards and the checkers. And wow. the, and the oh, how do you say? The, the cups. cups. The cups, yeah. 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 All you, you can teach. Is this more, af even more after COVID? Right. Because you don't know what's happened. I use a, a formula, a special formula to clean and sanitize this, uh, this um, all the all the uh, stuff of of the tournament, and uh, and so you, when you are with the room, the, when when the room is open, you really have the feeling that all is new. This is our. Uh, our target. That's you have great. to be to be sure that what everything you touch are clean. Every is clean. 
you pay like, a lot of attention to detail. So that's that's fantastic. Ma, uh, yes, we like to do that. And people people notice it. And it sounds like, you know, your tournaments get a lot of people to come play there. Um, how would you say to other people in the world that how can we grow back in and how can we get more people playing, coming to the tournaments and enjoying? It's difficult because we it's depend also about the the situation. For example, at the moment, uh, we have a geopolitical situation very, very, very difficult with two war in in the moment. And uh, many people have difficult to move. And uh, but in normal normal time, um, I think that uh, best uh, promotion is uh, the comments of the people that participated in your tournament. So if somebody that came talk well about uh, your event, uh, I think you can have more people in the in the in the next. But also COVID, for example, right. cut uh, the legs to everybody because yeah. for two years we are really in deep shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, and after slowly slowly we have some satisfaction but i my feeling is that it is not like before covid covid give us some heritage that is a not good heritage some legacy yes and uh, but Still, we, we have, uh, for example, after COVID, we ran a tournament in Cyprus with 600 people. So we reach our target. Yes, but, yes. But I see around the world, also economic situation, not all the people have the money to, to take the airplane, to pay the hotel, to pay the tournament. There are many, many issues to, to consider that. Do you have any ideas on how to grow back? I mean, at least locally, well, people maybe don't have the funding or the time to travel, but maybe like the local tournaments, like we we have them here twice a week in Los Angeles. You have them once a week in Milan. How do we get more people to play in those uh, local tournaments? Yes, uh, there are different. There are uh, many people that came quite to, to all tournaments. They like to travel. They have money to do that. They are happy with us, and and so. But um, I have, for example, many players. They don't like to 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 fly. Yeah. So if you can reach the venue of the tournament with the car or with the train, it's okay. If it's too long, for example, I ran for two years. A tournament in Sharm el Sheikh, mm. and uh, uh, all the people that don't like to take the airplane is difficult, no? Yeah, aviophobia. I don't know how do you say, but yes, something like that. Yes, I mean for me, for example, it's hard for me to travel with my commitments with work and my family you know i have two small children it's, it's hard to get away uh, but i do uh, participate in the local tournaments like we have that twice a week we play chouettes and we do other things and we try to get other people involved with uh, social media and things like that um, so yeah well i'm glad you're getting a lot of people playing in your tournaments and as we mentioned you're the secretary general of the Worldwide Backgammon Federation. Mm -hmm. Can you please tell our viewers what is the Worldwide Backgammon Federation, how it started, and all the things that you do? Yes, the Worldwide Backgammon Federation was established in the 1996 from the, an Italian engineer named Alberto da Pra. Alberto da Pra was very famous because he was dedicated to the rules. And uh, he was uh, for 
more than 10 years referee in Monte Carlo. After him, the referee was Gigi Villa, the world champion, even Italian. And um, uh, Alberto da Pra uh, considered that at that time, uh, every time you move to play a tournament, for example, we go together in Spain, we go together in Reno, we go together in Nassau to play in tournaments in Paris. Each tournament, the organizer use different rules. They use or local rules or something named international rules. My international rules don't mean anything because it's not fixed. It's something like an idea, a concept, but not. So he told me, first of all, we have to fix the rule, rule of, of play, a rule of, of uh, tournaments. And uh, he established all that. And then we start, a, we try to explain to the people to respect this rule. Because uh, we have many people that, uh, for them, winning is the best goal. For that, they sacrifice everything. <laughs> and it's not our, our, uh, our, uh, uh, sorry, I don't take the, the, the word, uh, it's not yeah. our aim. Our aim is to, there are the rules you have to respect, you have to play. And the rule is for you and for your opponent. It's not because we have to give a favor to. Because we noted that many, in many times, uh, there was favor for some player. For example, if you are a big one, uh, uh, a famous player, a director. It's like in the football. When football have to, to uh, come dire, the, the, the referee have to rule one little football club from nowhere, I don't know, and one of the big one, uh, Real Madrid or Coso, eh, he is not, not always he has the freedom to to do the right thing because it's a psychological um, pressure. And uh, when you are involved in that, you don't you don't feel you are under the psychological pressure. You think it's okay. But if you came out of this uh, uh, ball, you 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 see the reality, no? Right, right. So we try to do that. And, and for years we we worked very well. Then many people like to to found his own federation and uh, association. And uh, because in in the world is freedom, I may not be under uh, our concept. There are freedom, and there are billion of people in the world. I think it's space for everybody, but you have to offer the best uh, service at the best price. Competition. Yes, yes. You did mention that there were different rules in different places. What is an example of a rule that was different from one location to another location? Yeah. For example, when uh, you roll a die, a one die go over one checker. Uh -huh. In our rule, you have to take both the dice and roll again. In American, to to they uh, they for the Americans they are uh, they are okay with the with the die on the checker. It's little difference, not so so much, but there are some differences. But you need to know the rules in the tournament that you play so that when you roll the dice, you do it the right way. Yes. Uh, for example, I had, I remember I had a, but, but you know, 
there are many rules, but you cannot regulate it all the cases you have in a Begemon tournament. So our, uh, our way is uh, to give the essential rules. And then there are thousands of cases. We try to have a, a, a list of cases to, to that are uh, our reference in case something happen again. For example, I remember in Cyprus, somebody called the director for the for a dispute in a five points match, uh, a jackpot, five point jackpot. What is the problem? One player roll a die. The opponent stay with the with the arm like that. The dice uh, jump here to the to the arm, but come back regularly on the carpet of the of the board. This is completely regular because the important is the die is not touched with voluntary from somebody to change. It's something like he go on the on the on the board of the board. Right. So it's not uh, but the 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 man that rolled the dice that was really a bad roll told no I have to re-roll because it touched. So we have a dispute. Finally this man uh take because it was a 50 euro jackpot take 50 euro and and uh rope this 50 euro and put <laughs> on the table I go <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. We call it incidental contact. So if it just accidentally touches you without you actually trying to touch it voluntarily, then then it's okay. Yes, we don't. There are no voluntary. Is is happen? Could happen? Right. 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 We have to understand that. Yeah. Yeah. I've I've ruled on on those kinds of things. Um, but so I tell you, I am a fan of classic begemo. Uh, I I accept the clock because I know in the important tournament you have to 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 use the clock because if not you are out of the range of the uh, schedule. But uh, for example, I'm not a fan of baffle box. Baffle I, box. There are many many people that is really really fan of baffle box, and I'm sorry they <laughs> think. Baffle box is a modern invention because the uh, Roman during the Roman Empire they have a a, a, a baffle box much better with decorated uh, with because <laughs> at that time they didn't trust about your role. <laughs> so it's a very long story about the baffle box. But you but prefer the cups. I have to play baffle box. I play. I'm not. But for me. For me, the pleasure of Begemon is no clock, no baffle box, a good shaker, play, give your power into the dice. This is for me, because I think Begemon is many, many, many things, not only uh, not only nude numbers. Right. People enjoy different aspects of it. Yes, but there are freedom. Everybody play as they like. But for example, in our tournament, you cannot impose to use baffle box to me. Okay, we can impose if some people is prejudi preju prejudice. Prejudice. Yes, because in in the past they made some not clear action. Okay. Alora, we as director, we can impose that. But my opponent, when we sit down to play one against the other, uh, if he likes to play baffle box, he can propose me to play baffle box. I am free to, to say no. You play baffle box, I play with my cup. So it's freedom. 
but I know that now many, many people in America also, they are happy to play with the baffle box. Yeah, I, I enjoy playing with the baffle box. I find it moves things along faster. And for me personally, I work with my hands a lot. So when I shake the dice a lot with the cups, it hurts my forearms. So it's hard for me to do my work. But uh, yeah, so that's that's a lot of information about the Worldwide Backgammon Federation. Can you tell us a little bit about your involvement in the Federation? Uh, how yes. it's, how Hello, you started, uh, what you do? Yes, yes. I... I... I start that because I have to make an interview. Uh, I have to 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 give uh, to write an article about the world of Begemon. And uh, the first because this magazine was the magazine of the distributor of the Bentley in Italy is a high class. So immediately I thought about Monte Carlo. So first I took uh, contact with uh, Gigi Villa that was former uh, world champion. And uh, Gigi told me, ah, did you... yes, I am the world champion, but I don't know about this kind of things. You have to speak about Mr. De Pra. He is, uh, come dire, uh, he knows all the rules, all the things, he's referee, blah, blah, blah. Okay. And uh, he gave me the number. I called this Mr. Dapra. In a couple of days, we met. And Dapra explained me many things and then sent me also a, an extract about uh, the rule of the game and so on. And after that, he uh, took contact with the organization of Monte Carlo. At the time, the organization was SBM, Société de Ben de Mer. SBM is a national society that is uh, owner of all the most uh, important hotels and casinos in, in uh, Monte Carlo. And uh, now this, they don't have so many hotels as before, but uh, is, uh, in Monte Carlo is uh, the government, uh, uh, the, the most important company of the government. So uh, if uh, the director of SBM tell, okay, we do that, you do that. And everybody cooperate with you to do that. Now it's different. Now they sold uh, the Love's Hotel, now is Fairmont, and now they have to pay the room for the staff. At the, at the time, the room for the staff was for free because uh, a or organization of, of own company was totally different, totally different. And I I was invited in, in Monte Carlo for one week. I, I was there, I see everything. I wrote uh, several articles about that. And then Mr. Dapra told me, Guarda, I find, I, I found uh, uh, the Worldwide Begemon Federation, but they need uh, young people to, to run something. Because I start to, to, to cooperate with him. And he immediately asked me to be the secretary of the general secretary of the federation. And uh, he uh, teach me the secrets about the, organization and uh, and um, uh, the the organization the rules and so on uh, we start i start to to be director in local tournament then uh, i was co-director uh, director in couple of tournaments in san remo near monte carlo before monte carlo um some tournament in Saint Tropez together with Gigi Villa. And then I start uh, my tournament in uh, in Nova Gorica, Middle Europa. And then we run tournament uh, everywhere. I I run tournament in four continents. <laughs> I run tournament in San Martin, for example. For three years, I ran tournament in Switzerland. I ran tournament in Austria. 
in Slovenia, in Spain, in French, in Russia, in Croatia, in Montenegro, in Greece, in Egypt. Mm. I think is enough. Yeah, that's a lot. Now, one of the nice things about Europe is that there's there's a lot of different countries relatively close by so you can travel. So so that's nice. Um, so you've directed a lot of tournaments. Also, I know you've written a lot of articles. Can you tell us about some of the articles that you've written, please? Uh, let, um, let me know again. Um, you've written a lot of articles. Yes. Yes, please tell us about that. Ah, about my article. Okay. I wrote some article uh, for, uh, for this magazine, Prestige, name it, for uh, another uh, famous magazine, Epoca, in Italy. At that time, it was one of the best. And I remember I put a photo of uh, Antoinette. Yes. Antoinette, at that time, she was very tall, with very uh, short hair and very aggressive. <laughs> very aggressive. With a uh, ray-ban, with mirror and the Nile, red Nile, 10 centimeter. <laughs> and when you play with her and he, uh, she uh, kill one, your checker, with the nail, she take the, the checker on the air and the checker made something like that, and they tap, boom, <laughs> put on the bar. So I was fascinating about that. I I described that in the article, and then I I I I wrote many articles, but uh, I wrote also two uh, mm, mm, two uh, part of Begemon Encyclopedia, the Begemon, uh, Games Encyclo Encyclopedia. We have in Italy one little one, a book of all the games. Uh, I, I wrote the part regarding the Begemon. And then they made a, a big, um, a big uh, encyclopedia that they sell uh, for two years weekly. You can buy on the where they sell the newspaper, you can buy a little pieces of them after you have to collect together, no? Mm. And there are two of that uh, issues that there are dedicated to Begem on I wrote that. So very, very. I try to 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 develop and to spread Begem on ever. For example, now I am in busy in uh, in Milan. It's uh, a public library named Biblioteca Sormani. Biblioteca Sormani is a public library, the, the, the most important in Milan. And they called me in, in summer, please, can you come to explain what is Begemo? Only lesson as introduction to the Begemo. We don't have to, to give a bachelor to somebody, no, about Begemo. Only to to break the ice. Okay. Uh, I do last Tuesday, the first lesson. I start to explain about the history, about the painting that are about Begemon, about uh, uh, the ambience of the Begemon, about the books of the Begemon. For example, the Bible. Uh, uh, yes, yes. Oh, real. Oh, and please, my I'm really proud that Paul wrote me that. So before a tournament, I have to read that. Yeah. And um, and the the director of this library remained to to hear my lessons, and after the lesson, she came by me. To congratulate about the the lesson because it is a, it's a word I didn't imagine about how many things about Begemon there are, how many famous paint Caravaggio paint about Begemon, for example, and uh, nobody can understand that in the ancient uh, Rome 
uh, we have so many people that play Begemon, the emperor play Begemon. But uh, I don't know why people that uh, come uh, 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 nowadays at the Begemon, they think that because the best player are Danish, Japanese, the, the players came from this country. No. <laughs> Yes. Well, it sounds like you've done a lot for backgammon over many, many years and decades. So I wanted to thank you, express my uh, gratitude and appreciation for all the things that you do. Uh, before we conclude the video, do you have uh, maybe an interesting or funny story about backgammon that you can share with us? Oh, there are so many. <laughs> <laughs> there are so many. Uh, let me think. Let me think. Ma. No, I don't. I don't. Uh, I don't have. I have so many that I don't find one good <laughs> one for you. But what I I like to tell you is that that uh, one of my um, activity now is to create a, a little tournament with selected people. I, for example, I ran a tournament in Portofino since 10, ten years. We have a dress code. You have to come with a jacket, with a good pant, with a good shirt. And uh, we have uh, normally 10, 15 players that come from the Union Club of New York to play that. Because uh, we are in contact and they are crazy for Portofino. <laughs> so uh, we run that. As this year, I run another another event, little event like that in Forte dei Marmi. Forte dei Marmi is something like Pebble Beach for you. Very high, uh, high uh, class. And we try this this uh, this uh, way to attract people that don't want. Mm, there are many people don't want come in the big tournaments. Too many confusion. They are. Mm, they don't like that. So also for these people, I like to create something special. Obviously, it's something elitaire. I know is, but is. Um, Another way to to propose the big game. Um, is this can attract uh, uh, more sponsor because uh, normally in the big game on, in the normal big game on tournament, people are not really good, well dressed. <laughs> I think that because we don't have to run the hundred meter in ten seconds. We can dedicate uh, more time for our dress when we play a Begemon tournament. If we have the old photos of Monte Carlo, of Las Vegas, they are in smoking. I don't pretend they're smoking. Okay, tuxedo. Okay. Maybe it's too much tuxedo. Okay. Yeah. But jacket for a man, I think is a minimum. But the 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 day of the the, the world of today. It's completely mm -hmm. different. So I know I am out of the time. <laughs> but we try to do something in, in little in little portion to create this atmosphere. Because it in this tournament can come important people and maybe these important people can come to the public tournament. For example, I run uh, for years, when Jean Todt was uh, the chief of Ferrari, was the director of the race uh, department, uh, I ran one a year in February a tournament in Maranello with him. Uh, the prize was pieces of Ferrari. <laughs> uh, every year we visit some part of the, of the Ferrari uh, factory or the race department. And was very funny. Now I ran some time 
a tournament in Paris for him in one of the best hotel and uh, our private tournament but if people like to come I can write uh, I, I can accept them and there are little tournaments for 32 maybe 64 but uh, a, a tournament that we end in one night we start at six o'clock and we finish during the night so there are another way another spirit another um, proposal this is what we like to do but together with that we have the, the biggest tournament like cyprus like uh, montenegro i ran four years tournament in austria uh, i i ran for 20 years tournament in slovenia so, but you know, everything has your his time. Uh, the things have uh, started and end. Sometime, some story finish. <laughs> this is the story. Yes, I've I've really enjoyed my time with you, hearing all of your stories. Thank you. Uh, Thank my you. my one of my I have two uh, dreams. Okay. Uh, I like to come one time in Los Angeles. Yes. They open. And one time I like to go to New York for the open. Uh, for several handicap I have at the moment, I cannot come. But as I can, I will do it. If you ever do that, um, you'll be my guest here in Los Angeles. Uh, Candace and Patrick run an outstanding tournament here. And in New York, Lynn Ehrlich does an outstanding job. Um, and we're, we're very fortunate to have a lot of these people like yourself and other tournament directors. Um, and you've you've really done a lot for backgammon to uh, make it grow to all the people that come to your tournaments, how much enjoyment they have. Um, so so thank you again very much. Do you have any final comments before we conclude the video? Oh yes, please come to Cyprus, one of the best tournaments in the world. Yes, I'd like to promote that tournament. What is the date of that tournament? Uh, four ten uh, November. November. Okay. Uh, hopefully, um, I'm not sure if it will be published by then, but we will promote all of those tournaments. I've I've done videos with Arda and other people to promote tournaments. And if you ever want to promote other tournaments, uh, we can do separate videos for that. Uh, so thank you again to my new friend, Marco Fornazir, Secretary General of the Worldwide Backgammon Federation. We'll go ahead and conclude the video. Thank you to the viewers for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you to you and thank you to Kandas to promote this uh, this uh, series of video. And I hope we keep in touch and we will see personally very soon. Yes, this uh, uh, YouTube channel has given me the opportunity to meet people from all over the world that I would not have otherwise met like you and a lot of other people. So I really appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, again, oh, thank you. I thank you to you. I am honored friend. to be here. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll go ahead and conclude. Thank you to the viewers for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe and you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Let me know what you think in the comments below what you'd like to see in future videos so I can work on it. If you love Backgammon, you can become a member of this channel that will give you exclusive access to the most popular videos. Again, my book, Backgammon, Backgame Strategies is available. There's a link in the description to where you can get it. And if you're interested in lessons, please email me. My email address is also in the description. I look forward to seeing you in future videos. And until then, keep rolling your dice.